It's going to be one of those days, is it? Hi, this is Lot 76 Cars. My name's Simon and welcome to the Ginetta G-Fest at Silverstone. So this small sports car company is celebrating an unbelievable 65 years history with a festival at the Silverstone Racing Circuit in Northamptonshire in the UK. They were started by four brothers, the Warclub brothers, back in 1958 and taken over by the current owner, Lawrence Tomlinson, in 2005. Let's have a look at some of the cars in the paddock, some of the old ones, and also try and let's look at some more modern uh, Le Mans machinery as well. Hope you enjoy the tour. So following the company's reorganisation and moved to Scunthorpe in the 1980s, this is one of the cars produced. It, the company went back to uh, producing kit cars, this one being Ford based and it's the G31. Now I'll have a look closely around this one but you might recognise those doors. Yeah, they look suspiciously as if they came off a Fiesta Mark II and they've been really well incorporated into the body. This G31 has the notchback styling, the other variants, I think G26 and so on, had the more of a fastback styling. But um, this one, it's actually a relatively spacious car looking at this. We'll try and poke the camera through the window and have a look inside. Um, you can see it looks like it's got a Cortina dashboard. Um, obviously some pretty good racing seats there and actually a really fair amount of room. So this one looks like it's had some more work by the owner. The pop-up lights have been replaced by some sort of uh, semi-permanent um, lights and uh, it's quite a decent example actually. So probably one Ginetta that's more widely known than the others, although only maybe about 800 examples produced, is this G15, which is based on Hillman Imp Mechanicals. So it retains the rear mid-engine layout. I'm sure somebody will correct me if that's wrong. Um, and it's a really lovely looking, well-engineered sports coupe. Now I think at this stage, the cars produced were produced as complete cars rather than kits. There may well have been some sold to save the um, purchase tax that was applicable at the time. And these cars continued, I think, for some 67 right the way through to the early 70s. But probably that's the Ginetta that most of us would actually know. So I'm going to chat with Steve now, who owns this fantastic um, G15, the imp-based car that uh, I just mentioned. Let's have a chat with him and find out a bit more about them. Hi Steve, so tell us a bit more about this car because it's a bit of a history with this G15, isn't it? Well, yeah, I found it in Staffordshire uh, in 1982. Wow. Uh, it's a 1971 car, so it was 11 years old, and grass was growing through it. Oh, right. So I uh, rescued it, bought a, a new chassis off the Walkerts, uh, and built it up from that. Fantastic. I so, mean, that's a long history, over 40 odd years with that uh, same car. Well, yeah, well, that's right. You've enhanced the original imp engine or you, you've tuned it all? It's a 998 imp, which is uh, the old rally imp ah, engine okay. rather than the 875 Sport. Uh, it goes pretty well for 55 horsepower, but there's no weight to it. And um, it's actually still in its original paint when it was painted in Ferrari Rosso. 83, 83, back in 1983. Oh, and what makes this G15 so special? To hang on to a car for 40 odd <coughs> years, you, you, you know, there's got to be some well special relationship with it. it there has. Uh, my son stole it off me and went to the Isle of Wight with it uh, when he was 25. But two years ago, I said, do you still drive the Jeanette? And he said, I haven't driven it for about three years. So I gave him a BMW Z4 and went and fetched this and I've refurbished the brakes, etc. Sounds but, like you've both done okay out of that swap then, doesn't well, it? Well, yeah, yeah. He was happy and I was happy. But, uh, yeah, it's... If you look around here, it's the only... This is actually in its original livery. Wow. With its, with its chrome uh, bumpers, etc. Uh, and, you know, I'm keeping it original. Uh, you, you, you get a few of them. They, they you know, they're, they're lightening them. They're making them for... Like, the, the blue one over there, he's, he's set that up for hill climb. Uh, but I, I just like a nice classic car. Excellent. Oh, it's beautiful. You just see so few of them. How many Ginettas do you think were built in total, full stop, of this sort of 
original pre Tomlinson period. We talking low thousands or no? We're talking hundreds. Hundreds of them. Yeah. Wow. So this really one is there. this one is um, it's zero uh, one five two. So this is hundred and fifty second one built. Right. Fantastic. In the G fifteen. Oh, smashing. Well, thanks very much for talking. It was really appreciated. No Thank problem. You. Cheers. So here's one for Cobra fans, it's a Genetta G10 but with a 4.7 litre Mustang engine from what, uh, 6566 looking at the plate, love those mini light style wheels, the car's open, it's a left hand drive car, must be a relatively rare one, previously entered in the Hampton Court uh, Concourse Elegance, said completely wrongly in a very poor French accent, never mind. What a great car, you wouldn't think that was packing four point, uh, four point something litres, would you really, for a vehicle that was uh, in the, uh, available in the mid 60s. So Cobra didn't really have it all their own way, did they? Doesn't that look amazing? So Lawrence Tomlinson, who owns Genetta's Passion, is Le Mans, and this particular car is an example of the LMP Le Mans racer, had absolutely fantastic class success in that series and uh, this is one of the examples of vehicles that they've run with the full Ginetta logo quite a packed space to spend 24 hours albeit not with the same driver clearly fantastic aero with that uh, diffuser and splitter what a fabulous fabulous car so this is the G40 safety car which is used in the series. Obviously a current vehicle built around a tubular space frame, relatively simple. I believe these cars don't even have servo brakes, no ABS or anything like that. So really pure driving experience. And as I said, this one is the safety car. So obviously um, professional drivers driving this one have to uh, keep up to speed to avoid the other tires getting choked up, other cars getting choked up behind them. That's amazing, isn't it? That is one hell of a rear spoiler, isn't it, guys? <laughs> fabulous, fabulous car. So here's one of the current series. I think these, again, have a Ford engine. I'll drop that in the comments. I think it's something like a 3.7 or 4.7 litre engine. I'll correct myself if I'm wrong in the comments. This one is a road car. It's road registered, a 2014 car by the look of it. Again, one of those cars you could just turn up and race in and probably if you're if you're half decent you could be competitive perhaps um great for hill climbs i would have thought relatively uncomplicated what a lovely car so this is the larger variant to the g15 you probably see that more coupe style body but familiar on the front g21 fitted with either the i think the 1750 roots engine or a choice of the three liter essex engine again you can see that it's got that more coupe style in there and those larger mini light alloys it's a pretty car honestly i don't think i've ever seen a g21 close up what a fantastic car that one is isn't it lovely that's a rare one as well. It's almost got echoes of Aston Martin DBS at the back. What do you think? Pop that in the comments if you think I'm right or I'm uh, barking up the wrong tree, but it's certainly got that style, hasn't it? The back end Audi Coupe, something like that maybe. So we're gonna have a chat with the owner of this G33 with a Rover V18. Helpfully the number plate gives it away a little bit. Oh, doesn't it look absolutely lovely? Echoes of, of what D-type Jaguar a bit there as well beautiful interior really really nice looking car I love those yellow dials as well um, not sure whether it's got a, the hard top looks probably like a rudimentary affair I suspect those slim tail lights we'll find out where those tail lights are from because that's bothering me what are they what are they of and we'll have a look at the engine so the owners are going to show is the engine as well this is a Rover V8 engine um, Let's ask the owner a bit more information about this because uh, he's the man who'll know more than we do. Um, so tell us about this fabulous G33 Rover V8. Right, she is a G33 Rover V8, number 98 of the 98 made, 4 litre V8, um, modified, um, modified uh, Rover V8 TVR tune, high lift cams, stainless steel tubular exhaust, 
roughly 260 brake horsepower through 800 kilos with no toys whatsoever, uh, no traction control, no ABS, no power steering, not even a servo. So just yeah. added bravery. Yeah. So yeah, as I say, I run out of talent before I run out of power. Thank you. Thank you very much for talking to us. No problem. So the G4 Ginetta model was a more usable road-based model as well as a vehicle that could be raced with a live rear axle introduced in 61 fitted i believe with a ford what, anglia 105e engine obviously very lightweight clearly with that uh, with that um, glass fiber body love that bubble shape again as you can see it's a style that's been carried forward almost to this day uh, with uh, Ginetta's again you know a car that's from 61 that's absolutely incredible i think these were remanufactured by a company called dare not sure about that but uh, i'll try and put that in the comments if i work that one out nevertheless what a lovely looking car so this is a g32 convertible we've seen its sort of uh, predecessors the g31 again it's got those fiesta doors but it's so much more than just a car that's uh, a, a bit of a parts bin special. Lovely pop-up lights. This one's in that brilliant green colour. Stunning looking car inside. Really well appointed. I reckon that dash is from a Fiesta Mark 3 or 4. Not sure about that one. Answers on the postcard please for that one. Um, but I tell you what I do know, I do recognise, apart from some of the Ford parts uh, used for the door handles and things like that, I recognise those rear lights, and we'll take a close look in a second. Can you guess what they're from? Don't shout all at once at the back. I recognise they're from a Mark 1 Ford Sierra. Again, I didn't know there was a G32 convertible, but I'm so glad to have seen that one. Perfectly preserved car that one is. So we've got another G33. Uh, this vehicle commenced production in uh, 1991, I believe. I think pretty much packing, almost packing a Rover V8. Interesting shape to that windscreen. I don't know what that screen's from, but I'm not sure you get a replacement. Look at that screen shape. It must be bespoke to that car, how it's, it's rounded, but also beveled off at the corners. Fabulous color combination of this sort of uh, racing green metallic very well appointed in there again you know it's not something that you really genetics are being well known for absolutely superb aero body i've yet to work out what the lights have been stolen from but uh, it does have an echo of a 50s jaguar le mans car something like that whatever it's an absolutely stunning car isn't it so this is a G15, which the uh, owner's going to tell us a little more about in a second. This one's open so we can have a better look at that rear engine configuration. So under the bonnet, yeah, what you find is uh, access to this uh, racing type fuel tank. Lovely in orange, isn't it? This one's got a Webasto type sunroof. Fabulous little cars. And of course in the back, in the back we have got the engine. I think this is the Coventry Climax imp engine, so we'll get the owner to tell us a bit more. But this is lovely, isn't it? Absolutely gorgeous. Adrian, tell us a bit more about this fabulous G15 rear engine. Um, obviously, it's a, a relatively early car, isn't it? Yeah, it's uh, chassis number 134, so it's built in 1971. So oh, wow. It's 52 years old. It's uh, till I bought it 10 years ago, it had been off the road since 1985. I've just spent 10 years putting it back together from boxes of bits basically. So it's got an uh, imp sport engine which I uh, rebuilt from a standard imp engine. And uh, basically, when I got it, it had no glass, no seats, no hydraulics, no electrics. So we're going to have a chat with the Ginetta Owners Club and tell us a bit more about this thriving, friendly little club. So uh, let's have a chat. So Don Armstrong, tell me about this friendly little club uh, that you've got here. How many members have you got in there? We have between 350 and 400. Oh wow. Scattered all over the country, internationally actually. We have people in Australia and America and uh, Europe. and So we are very far spread and um, we've got them scattered over the UK as well. 
and you're able to help with what parts supply because Junette has had what a number of owners lots of different uh, we, engine suppliers Lawrence uh, gave us the molds oh, for, the, for the older cars a few oh, years that's, back that's fantastic so uh, we we haven't got a full set of everything but we've got G15 which is the most prolific car right. anyway so we've got a mold to that so we can supply repair panels or complete panels to if you have an accident so they don't get written off really well, it's a good job those panel those uh, molds still survive or quite a lot of them survive so th things like engine Coventry Climax engines well it's, and it's Hillman Imp you go to your imp supplier excellent uh, the rest G21 uh, that's uh, Hillman Hunter stuff uh, 33s it's a bit we've got we've got a fairly uh, sound list that tells us where everything's from Excellent. so we can point you in the right direction you know brake calipers so are if they want to find the owners club they should check out your website website there's a website at um, janetta.org or you put janetta owners club at a search engine it'll find us excellent and uh, you can join the club for a princely sum of about 30 pounds well that sounds like 30 pounds well, well spent, spent. So, and uh, you get four magazines a year and we you get discounts to well, events like this and the NEC, the classic car show at the NEC because we're always there and um, the major classic car shows were, you know, were Oh fabulous, we might see the Practical Classics or the Lancaster Well, uh, the NEC in November for Brilliant. the, for the whatever they call it The, the Lancaster NEC, one, yeah, yeah. Uh, We stopped doing the Practical Classic right. ones in February because it was just too much too much doing two shows. Yes, I can imagine. Um, we we have tried to distance ourselves from the kit car scene. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Because that's Janetta's in the eighties made kit cars. Yeah. Uh, so, but most of them are factory built. Even the fifteens, some of them were kit cars. Excellent. But that you bought the whole thing. Just like a load of salad. And that's what people don't understand. They mistake these a bit like um, some of the other cars. They were factory built cars, but just maybe finished because of taxation yeah, reasons. Yeah. So this looks like another G4. It's a 1968 on an F plate, a lovely car in powder blue. Hadn't seen this one a little bit earlier. Stunningly, stunningly beautiful condition. So simple inside. Not the much in the way of instrumentation, but what an absolutely glorious looking car that is, isn't it? No mirrors uh, on the outside to uh, spoil the lines. Uh, it looks like it's got steel wheels on it. Absolutely fantastic, isn't it? So this is a fabulous G10 with a difference. So this one, they've got a pretty, I think a small block American engine in normally, but this one's been customised and uh, apart from the paint job um, it looks like it's packing a lot more power look at those bulbous arches on that g10 that looks incredible doesn't it let's try and get a shot around the back of that one the metal flake paint is absolutely glorious try not to get into other people's pictures here attracting a lot of attention what a brilliant brilliant car somebody's gone to town on that one haven't they guys so it's just as unreserved on the inside as well. Look at those build aluminium controls, that RPM steering wheel, match the registration number. Wow, that is just amazing. So glad I've seen that car today. Incredible. So final car in the Ginetta's Owner Cub display, a lovely um, G15 again, I guess probably with the Coventry Climax engine in. This one's got the extended arches. Um, looks beautiful in that yellow and black combination, doesn't it? You can see that it's, uh, to me, the styling at the back of these is got echoes of, I don't know what you think about this, but echoes of, uh, of Lotus Elan. Yeah, maybe it has. Excellent. Anyway, lovely to see the owners club well represented here today. So given that Ginetta is a racing company, let's try and uh, have a walk into one of the pit garages and have a closer look at their current competition car, which has been running all the day uh, around the track here at Silverstone. And uh, let's try and show you a few close-up shots of that as well. So uh, stick with us, we'll uh, take you into the garage now. So we're just having a look at the pit garage of the um, 
cars have been prepared that have been racing today some are going to race at it later on as well proper work supported outfit you'll see the support trucks as we work through and the cars in the background so the guys are apparently just refueling the car it's a 3.7 litre ford stock relatively stock engine but obviously in a lightweight chassis look at the size of that exhaust wow god that puts a few boy racers to shame there so we'll let the guys get on with the work as we step out the garage and let's take a, a look at some other things so just some more shots within the garage you can see the uh, body uh, um, rear body sections off the car you can have a much better look at the car here that uh, tubular space frame chassis and the front's off as well and the guys working on it which is cool I wouldn't like to uh, light a cigarette round here because uh, the cars are being refuelled as well but uh, quite a lot of work going on between races and uh, still got work to do by the look of it I think it might take a bit more than a tub of glass fibre from Halfers to sort that one out sorry to say so you can see Ginetta today is a well supported professional outfit you've just got to take a look at some of the trucks supporting the racing series here to know that these guys are massively invested in GT racing today and uh, great to have a walk down the paddock and see such a thriving vibrant racing series as well so here's one of the LMP1 cars getting a bit of fettling before it goes out on the track technicians working on that one you'll see it looks like a former Formula One car in the background there absolutely fantastic shot of the guys uh, working on that car and uh, for Formula One enthusiasts that looks like it might be a Tolman I'll have to I'll consult the old F1 back catalogue for that one but that's him as well today so is Mitchell in here with a couple of trucks at least and a full mobile tyre fitting operation like no others a bit different to your local quick fit I suppose but uh, the service is probably a fair bit quicker look at that you bring your race car in here and they'll have you turned around in no time no wonder that Bebendium's looking so pleased with himself he's got the market sewn up hasn't he So thanks for joining me here today at the G-Fest event at Silverstone. Hope you enjoyed the uh, tour around the historic cars and the workshops. Please like, share, subscribe, turn on notifications to get early notification of new videos. And I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Thanks for watching.